Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining me for day number 19 of these prophetic teachings in which the Lord has asked me to um, share with the house of Israel. Um, as always, I invite you to um, get out your scriptures and read along as these um, teachings are given. And as always, I just encourage each and every one of you to take these scriptures to the Lord and let him walk you through the, his truth um, from on high. Um, and these teachings are truly the teachings of the kingdom of the gospel of God and not the gospel of man. And at this time, the reason I've been asked to do this is truly for the house of Israel. So I encourage each and every person to take this to the Lord for, so that they may learn for themselves. And today we will be in Mark 7 and we're going to go from verses 1 through 16. And I thought yesterday that maybe he was going to have me do a different video, but not quite there yet. So what he's asked me to do today um, is in continuance to what he's been teaching us of the, the patriarchal order <clears throat> and, um, and what John the Baptist and Christ were actually teaching the people. So he wanted me to go back um, just really quick over yesterday in Luke 1, 72, when uh, the scripture says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. All of these teachings are to bring the house of Israel back into <clears throat> remembrance of the, the um, kingdom in which they are from and the, um, the truths of the kingdom of God, which they already have, um, they're part of them. So all these teachings are to bring all things back into remembrance at this time. And, um, he also wanted me to go over um, sorry, I have a dog outside <laughs> freaking out. So hopefully he calms down so that he's on a distraction. When, so there was a couple different things. The first one was the holiness and righteousness that he talked about. So how can the people, um, walk in this holiness and righteousness? And I believe that it was. It was when, oh, so, so in 75, so that they may serve him without fear. And they're talking about they may serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. So the holiness and right, righteousness comes from the salvation and then the redemption process that Christ will walk us through. And, um, this piece, we talked about how, what was the purpose of Christ's birth? It was to bring um, you know, glory to God in the highest. So God of the very first world, glory to God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill towards men. So that peace comes from us returning, um, and, uh, and giving glory back to God in the highest of his eternal plan. So that is the, um, Uh, in, in 79, when it says to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So he's guiding us back into that eternal peace, which is absolutely beautiful. So, and, and how this is done is, so if we understand what the cloud is, it says that Christ will come in a cloud of glory. Um, the cloud is actually the veil. And, and so the cloud represents the covering that has been over the people. Well, that veil, Christ split the veil. And that is, that is done. The reason why the splitting had to happen was is so that we can, um, we can be in that heavenly realm, again, being taught. So, um, again, that cloud is that veil that is now split so that we can see into the heavenly realm. And that's what Christ is doing now. He's coming in that cloud, that, that veil is being split 
and it's being done from that heavenly realm. He's descending from that heavenly realm, splitting that bell, and we are being taken into the heavenly realm to learn directly um, from on high the eternal truths of the kingdom of God. So there's one more thing that he showed me from yesterday. After um, I was done with the video, he took me on this path of <laughs> researching scriptures. And everything that he has been having me teach is out of the four gospels. Well, something that I never understood, well, I understood, but I guess it wasn't to the extent that he showed me, was that the four gospels were just the records from those disciples, um, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were, they were um, records of what Christ and of what um, John the Baptist, they were, they were the records of those events. And as we understand that the four gospels, now that we understand the patriarchal order and who those men are, the father testifies of the son and the son testifies of the father. They testify one another throughout those four gospels. And so if we again can read them like the book of Revelations, understanding that it was actually written by John the Baptist for the house of Israel and that um, the teachings in it are absolutely beautiful and they will come alive if we just understand who they're actually speaking to. They're speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel in the book of Revelations and the kingdom, they are speaking to the kingdom in the four gospels. So hopefully that will help people in reading through those four gospels and understanding that the father and the son are literally witnessing and testifying of one another in that process. So today <clears throat> we are going to be in Mark 7, 1 through 16. And it's interesting because there's one account that, it, that, um, when Christ was before Pilate and he said, if my kingdom were, were here on the earth, they would fight for me. Well, the kingdom of, of Christ's kingdom is now on the earth and, um, they are being called out of the darkness and we know who he is. And so, um, are we, are we testifying of the truths in which he's teaching us? Are we bringing his kingdom forward upon the earth? So <clears throat> the whole purpose um, in me going through these last few days that the Lord has shown me is John and Christ came and what were they doing that upset the people so bad? They were breaking the false traditions of the fathers and they were just, um, and they were despised for it because they were teaching the kingdom, true traditions of the fathers, but the world has the false traditions of the fathers. And because of that, they were despised. And we talked about you know, Christ on the Sabbath, he was, it looked completely different from what man had taught and they were despising him for it. John the Baptist at his, um, at the naming of John the Baptist, his father, Zachariah said, no, his name is not Zachariah. His name is John. And they were from the beginning, it was to break these false traditions that the world had created over the people. <clears throat> Well, well, they're speaking to the house of Israel. So um, the truth is given to them. And then the world, um, as they're brought back in, so they were scattered. Now they're being gathered. And then they will be sent out to now bring in the end harvest and help the world see the truth of the true traditions of the fathers and what um, Christ was teaching when he was upon the earth. As the kingdom returns, it will look different than what the world has built their idea of the kingdom up to be. Christ will make all things new. So, <clears throat> um, you know, we have spent all this time building up the kingdom of man upon the earth and our kingdoms that we believe are kingdoms of <sighs> kingdoms of God upon the earth. And the whole thing, he, he's doing a complete redo of this and we will watch the kingdoms of man in all aspects um, of how the world has built up this kingdom of man come come shattering down and that has to do with one of the um, right before these videos started over revelation that he gave me that the house of Israel has to be there to help as these people have put their faith they have built their kingdoms up to man instead of the kingdom of God they have not built that kingdom of God upon the earth and when their faith comes shattering down because they have built their kingdoms upon the false precepts of man. Um, God needs his people to be there to help them, help lead them directly to Christ, to um, 
help put those shattered pieces together from now the kingdom perspective and no longer man's perspective. <clears throat> so hopefully that helped. Okay, so we are going to be in Matthew, um, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 7. And we are going to go 1 through 16. And so this has to do with these um, false traditions. Um, <clears throat> so verse 1, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. We've talked about this. The Pharisees, obviously being those religious people that are like, nope, it's just like this. And the scribes, those who are very learned in the gospel of man. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with, defile, with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they <clears throat> found fault. So immediately when it looks different from what man has built the kingdom of God up to be, they're going to find fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. So again, holding on to the false traditions that the world has built up. And when they came from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, basins, vessels, and the tables. So he's, um, all these false traditions, there are many false traditions that have been um, received and, and held on to um, from generation to generation. Five, then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not ye disciples according to the tradition of the elders? So again, the, Christ said, I didn't come to bring peace on earth. I came to bring the peace. Um, how to say that? Um, oh, I lost my train of thoughts. So I'm not sure. So apparently I wasn't supposed to go there. So we'll, we'll just leave it with that. <laughs> um, So as we evaluate our own lives, there are many, many false traditions in our own lives that the Lord has to come and do a complete redo and is not going to be comfortable because he completely takes us out of that worldly mindset and shows us, okay, this is a false belief. This is a false tradition. This is not, this is not of the kingdom of God. And it, it's like, it's a process to go through that. And there are, like he said, there are many Many things that we have received that are not are not the true traditions of the kingdom of God. Six. He answered and said unto them, "Well, hath, well hath Elias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me." So, do we honor God with our hearts? Or do we honor God with our lips? Because I, we've talked about this, that the Pharisees and Sadducees, they're very learned and they, they walk a walk or they talk a talk that they don't walk the walk with. So our hearts have to be pure. And this is why I've talked about that um, our hearts have to be daily evaluated to make sure that they are in alignment with God. And until we've allowed Christ to take us through this redemption process, that all evil is removed and what remains is the good, that um, that our, um, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, this video is going to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, but um just evaluating our hearts every day to make sure that they are in a line with God and that we are not, that we are not the hypocrites that are just honoring God with our lips and the things of the world and the things that the world has taught us. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man? So they're teaching doctrines saying, oh, these are the commandments of man. For lying aside the commandments of God. So they don't actually um, 
we talked about this before where they were teaching the commandments, but they weren't keeping the commandments. So, um, they were here. The, you're hearers of the word. You're not doers of the word, but they aren't even teaching the commandments. They're teaching doctrines saying, Oh, these doctrines are the commandments of God. And this is Elias. This, so these are the words of Elias. And we know that Elias is John the Baptist. Um, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. So there are many traditions of the fathers that, that are false. And, and Elias is warning of us, warning the people of this. And he said unto them, full well, ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own traditions. So a long time ago, he showed me that it's like what, what we've done with the gospel of God, but it has, it has become the gospel of man as man has perceived it. However, they've chosen to perceive it. They, it's like, you know, this beautiful um, buffet with all these different kinds of foods. And you're going to go and you're going to pick and choose just what looks good. And that's what we are going to do. And that's what he's saying. Um, you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own tradition. So we only do with what's comfortable with us so that we can keep those false traditions of, of man. 10 for Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother and whoso curteth father and the mother, let him die the death. So if we understand the father and the mother, this is actually from a kingdom internal perspective, the father and the mother, but this will be the, the, um, Mindset that the world puts on it. In 11, but ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free, and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. And this is what he explained to me. <clears throat> okay, as... As we look at our children as other oh, gifts and that our children are here to do our will and follow us and follow our traditions and um, follow what we will teach them. And as I talked about in another in a previous video about the veil, we actually create the veil over our children and we create that cloud of of um, unbelief, of false traditions of the fathers, of how the world sees that this is how it is. And because the children don't come here with a veil, we quickly put all of our ideas and beliefs and ideas and, well, this is what we want for this child. And this is what we want you to do. And this is what we want you to succeed with your life. And when that happens, we move that child away from honoring the father and the mother. <clears throat> 13, making the world word of God of none effect through your tradition. So again, we've now moved that child away from um, Heavenly Father and Mother, the father and the mother, very important, and um, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions. So the false traditions of man have made um, the word of God in none effect, which ye have delivered. So... We delivered that to our children because we lived in this false precept of the gospel of man. And many such like things do, do ye. <clears throat> so he says many multiple times as Elias is given this prophecy. There are many things that we do to bring these false traditions onto our children. 14. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken Unto me, every one of you, and understand. So hearken means hear me. Hear what I'm saying. I'm going to read that one more time. 14. And when he had, had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Understand that the whole purpose of, this, of the return of the house of Israel, the, the return of the kingdom to this earth, the return of father and son to this earth is literally 
to break these false traditions and these false beliefs that have been instilled in the people. 15. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man, the things of the world. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Um, so <laughs> that was what I was supposed to um, share today. And I hope that that brings enlightenment to your minds and that you will please take this um, to the Lord and learn for yourself of these truths in which um, were shared. And yes, Christ, you know, he went in breaking the traditions, but then he gives the words of Isaiah and he gives the words um of the Father to the people, and these false traditions cannot remain on the earth, cannot remain with um, in God's people if the kingdom of God is to return. We have to get to that kingdom mindset and that kingdom understanding that it can only come through the, you know, yes, first salvation, then the redemption, that Christ will walk us through that process back into the presence of God, which was the whole purpose of him splitting the veil for us to be able to do that. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.